And the results will be in a week from Wednesday. Mark Rogers TV on the recruiting trail with uh, David Waters from SEC Breakdown talking Florida Gators. Uh, David, of course, thanks so much for joining us. Despite the rough stretch uh, with Florida State, Alabama, and Michigan the last three games, a successful campaign for Jim McElwain out of the gate in his first year in Gainesville. Uh, let's let's look at the current recruiting class, the way things break down, and some of those guys you're excited to see uh, on campus and, and uh, in the uniform this fall. Yeah, and I'll start with the uh, early enrollees and – you know, you mentioned 10 wins for Jim McElwain in his first season. A lot of that can be contributed to uh, how fast they started off 6-0 and with under real Greer. So Florida gets a quarterback. In turn, they start getting some wins. Uh, so now, you know, Greer's suspended, so and Treon Harris more than likely will not be the quarterback for Florida. So they brought in two true freshmen who will come in and uh, as early enrollees. The big one, I know you, you sure, uh, Felipe Franks, 6'6", 225, from down here in Florida. He was the third-best pro-style quarterback in the class. Uh, he really uh, – the Army All-American game, he went through that. He was on the same team as Jake Beeson, uh, a Georgia commit. Uh, all reports, you know, he had a great week of practice. You know, he definitely could hit the deep ball. He has a big-time arm. Um, like I said, 6'6", 225. He has all the tools that you're looking for in a pro-style quarterback, especially Jim McElwain. So, uh, but he did struggle in the game and uh, really, really struggled in the game. Uh, but, you know, I caution, you know, taking a lot from these all-star games. You know, these guys are there for a week. They are maybe practice three, four times a week. Uh, they're implementing systems that, you know, they're probably not really suited for them. And, you know, don't take too much from these all-star games. Yes, he struggled, but, you know, in the week leading up to it and the practice and stuff, that's where you're going to get a lot of the one-on-ones and teaching moments. And he did pretty well there. So, uh, but, you know, coming in, he probably does need the red shirt. Florida has Luke Del Rio and then Purdue, Austin Appleby from uh, the transfer from Purdue, Austin Appleby coming in. So those, you know, guys have some experience and probably be the one, two guys. And Frank, he, he does need the red shirt and, uh, but, you know, who knows? Maybe he does go – he's there early. Maybe he goes to his spring practices. Maybe he impresses the coaches and can start from day one. But uh, as raw as he is, he probably needs to come in. And then Florida got a three-star commit from Texas, Kyle Trask, another 6'6", 211 pounds. Uh, he sat on the bench uh, at his high school, which is weird. Uh, but the quarterback he sat beside, behind is currently committed to Houston. Uh, he didn't feel like transferring, so he got playing time when he could. But what really sold Florida was he went down to Florida for a camp, and Doug Nussmeyer and Jim McElwain were really, really, really impressed with him. He has all the tools. Uh, he came in, I guess, two weeks ago, I guess, when the semester started. Uh, impressed the coaches with his size and knowledge already of what's going on. So, you know, he's going to be a part, bit of a project. Really raw guy. Doesn't have a lot of experience. So he's going to, what can Nussmeyer and McElwain figure out with him? He's probably going to be you know, a year or two of project. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see with all these quarterbacks early enrolled what spring practice looks like coming up. Now, I'm sure I'm missing some guys, but Matt Castle is the first guy that I remember who didn't start in college at a big-time school, then went to the NFL, and once he got uh, through Tom Brady and, and the Patriots and went to some other teams, including the Vikings, actually became a starting quarterback and the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. Now, this would be unheard of at least a, a, if somebody knows of another incident in which a kid could not start for their high school then goes to a program like florida and becomes a starting quarterback that would be that would be kind of crazy uh david i would say with the 26 enrollees it sounds like this class is pretty firmly entrenched uh at the, at the same time are there some kids out there that have florida on the short list that if they come through and sign on the dotted line could really make this a pretty special class uh, yes, while struggling right now, getting uh, wide receiver commits from in-state, Nate Craig Myers, Benjamin Victor, Eli Stove, Sam Bruce, Trey Nixon, all those guys are leaving, not going to Florida. Um, but they still have a shot of the guy from Texas, a uh, player from Ty uh, Texas, Ky Tyree Cl Cleveland. Uh, is committed to Houston. That seems shaky at the moment. Uh, he's really looking at TCU. Just visited Arkansas this past weekend. Uh, from what I heard, that visit went really well. And he's going to take a visit to Florida, you know, this weekend as, a, as his final official visit. Uh, he has a good relationship with a fellow Jacksonville recruit, uh, a fellow wide receiver recruit, uh, Jacksonville kid, Rick Wells. Uh, they grew up in Jacksonville together. So Rick Wells is committed to Florida. They've been talking a lot. 
and maybe um, Wales can get uh, Cleveland to pull him from uh, Texas and, and uh, come to Florida. He's a big-time playmaker. He really showed out in an all-star game uh, that he can go get the ball, run clean routes. Uh, you know, he might be that signing day surprise like Antonio, Antonio Callaway was for Florida last year. And we know how he came in and was the top premier playmaker for this Florida offense this past year. Uh, Florida still needs help at wide receiver. You know, Callaway will be the only returning playmaker at the position. Uh, so we're going to see, you know, Florida's bringing in a good bit of wide receivers. Uh, Dre Massey is a uh, junior college kid coming in. He's an early enrollee. Joshua Hammond's an early enrollee. And Freddie Swain's an early enrollee. So Florida's bringing in receivers to see, you know, maybe a hit on a couple of these guys. That receiving core is going to be very young. And besides Callaway and Brandon Powell, then those are the only two proven play- playmakers Florida has at the position. It's going to be interesting to see what guy can come in and make an impact like Callaway did last year. Yeah, we've talked about it in recent years, David, that uh, there have been lacking play, uh, dynamic playmakers on the outside for this Florida team. But at the same time, it was difficult to evaluate with uh, some marginal quarterback play and then also uh, some issues along the offensive line. And that was really the reason that I didn't see this team competing, even though the East is down, competing with Georgia and Tennessee going into the season, because I didn't see a contending team that had a positional unit that appeared to be as weak and thin as the Florida offensive line. But it, it seems as though six months to a year has made a world of difference. Right. And Stone Forsythe is going to be offensive tackle from Winter Garden, West Orange High. Um, they need offensive linemen still. They did bring in a big you know coup last year. But this is one that maybe he's coming in now. He's <laughs> six seven, three hundred 300 pounds as a high school player. Um, Florida will have three starters coming back on the offensive line. So, like I said, they're in better shape than they were last season. But now they need to add some depth. And uh, Forsyth is a three-star prospect. You know, you don't really see many stars for offensive linemen. Uh, he won't take a starting, you know, tackle spot from David Sharp or Fred Johnson or Martez Ivy, which one of those guys wins it. But he, he could be a part of the rotation. That's what Florida's looking at right now with these offensive linemen. They got their big guys last year to add and throw in right away. But now maybe – I know we joked about last um, last year about the you know Disney Disney World theme park joke Michael Wayne wanted to say it was a turnstile. Uh, that won't be the case this year. You know, Florida's got a big time guy coming in. He's an early enrollee. He'll get some experience in the springtime, and uh, yeah, I think you can really look for him to uh, to make a mark in the fall. Is there any guy out there, or maybe two or three guys that uh, that are coming into the fold that uh, may not have all the accolades and, and a ton of stars next to the name, but based on what you've seen on tape or heard through scouting reports and, and banter on social media, and maybe from some coaches or what they were able to accomplish in high school that you're kind of intrigued by that that might turn out to be a diamond uh, in the rough? I got two, and I'll make this quick. One's kind of a joke, but not a joke in a way. A kicker. We saw what Florida, the big struggle Florida had last year with that. And they stole a kicker from Alabama. Uh, he was committed to Nick Saban and that, that program for a while. But Eddie Pinero, um, you know, he's not usually big names with kickers in, in recruiting, but uh, he's known for his leg. Uh, he's, there's videos out there of him drilling practice, you know, in practice for 77-yard field goals. Uh, they went viral, you know, in the Florida community and, there's a little bit of excitement around him only because, you know, the, the Florida kicking game this past season was a joke. So he's going to be able to come in right away where he has every chance to win the starting job. And uh, definitely look for him to be the kicker uh, going into next year. And then I also want to look at uh, just because Kelvin Taylor is leaving and Mark Thompson, you know, JUCOs don't really get a lot of love. It's, and it is rare to see them come in and make a big impact. But he's the top-rated 2016 JUCO running back. Um, and he's going to be joining the Jordans, Jordan Cronkite and Jordan Scarlett in the Florida backfield. Uh, he's at six foot two, two hundred and thirty pounds, and runs a four three forty, so four three seven forty. So they got a guy that big and that fast. I think that's what Jim McElwain's kind of waiting on. I, I think Jordan Scarlett and Cronkite didn't really show all they could show as a freshman, so it was really important for McElwain to go and get another. Uh, running back, but this time he's got one with some junior college experience. So I think I know JUCOs don't get a lot of love; they don't really come in and make huge impacts. But that's one I'm really looking at, uh, just because of his size and speed, and in the system of McElwain and Nussmeyer, that's the player I'm really looking for to really come in and make an immediate impact and with, with not a lot of love. I'd like to let everyone know that a few weeks ago, David and I launched uh, an SEC breakdown uh, platform along with Mike Laval from Last Word on Sports and also Chad Neepling from Fox Sports Arkansas. 
So we don't have the website up and running. We're pushing Chad to get that done. No, Chad's doing a great job, doing a phenomenal job. And without him, we don't have a website. But uh, Chad is grinding right now to, to get the website launched. We've got the, the Twitter handle with SEC Breakdown. So that's it plainly spoken, SEC Breakdown. So go to Twitter. You will see a ton of SEC football information and other sports as well. Uh, again, we're cranking out as much content as possible. Uh, these recruiting videos as well. We will get to a, a number of them as well. We posted uh, Auburn, Alabama, Arkansas, and now Florida, and we will get to some other ones on the recruiting trail. Uh, we produce a show each and every week called SEC Breakdown. Uh, currently on Sundays, we're floating around Thursday nights possibly as well. So please be engaged. If you love SEC football, that's the place to be. Uh, find us on Twitter, first of all at SEC Breakdown. All right, David, did I miss anything? Uh, just quickly mention a big, big, you know, this is the big last official visit weekend coming up. So the three main players, uh, wide receiver, I mentioned him earlier, Tyree Cleveland, uh, Alabama linebacker, Lindell Wilson. Looks like it's going to be between, be between Alabama and Florida for him. And Louisiana quarterback, Christian Fulton. If Florida can pull a, a DB out of Louisiana, that's a big coup. Uh, so that's uh, a one that, I'm really, really looking forward to. They feel their needs, and you know, as of right now, the commits they get are uh, pretty much icing on the cake. Yeah, I don't know if there's a school that has a state lockdown in recent years like LSU does Louisiana. They hardly ever let any elite players out of that state. So uh, maybe less is slipping just a bit. I don't know. <laughs> and, right. there's a, and there's no in-state competition too much either. So it's, no, you know, exactly. like you say, he, 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 he locks it up. So. All right, David Waters from SEC Breakdown. Uh, breaking down the Florida Gators. Uh, we are just about a week away from National Signing Day. It's always a pleasure, David. Thanks, Mark.